If you've managed to keep up so far, great job, you're doing really well. We're going to see one last new piece of content before we move into our first project, the form validation project, where we're going to review everything and build a more real world application, learning using the skills we've learned. I'm going to show you one more thing and that is child parent communication. So far we've seen parent to child communication. We're able to pass a value from a component, in this case into number, using props. So we're passing from parent down to child. What we haven't seen is the opposite direction. Sometimes you have a child that needs to communicate with the parent, and that's what we're going to see now. This is a little bit of an advanced one, so uh, just try and follow along the best you can. We're going to see this a lot throughout the course as well, so don't worry if you don't fully grasp everything. The first thing we're going to do is clean this code up a little bit. We have a little bit too much code here we're not using anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these. Finally, I'm going to save this off, and now we just have a list of numbers. We can also delete some variables. We're not using count, we're not using value anymore, we're going to go ahead and delete the error message. We're not using this either. Finally, we're going to delete increment, but we are going to keep our methods key. What we're going to do is to change this from a list of numbers into a list of buttons. Let's go ahead and make that refactor. We're going to head up to our number component and make that refactor now. All we're going to do is change this into a button. Save it off and everything is still working. And what we're going to build is this. Every time we click a button, we're going to somehow communicate to the parent, and we're going to keep a list of the history of all the buttons that were clicked. This is going to mean we have to communicate from our child component up to our parent component, and we're going to see how to do that right now. First, we have to listen for an event. We have seen this before, and we're going to do it using VON. We're going to listen for an event. In this case, it's going to be the click event, and what we can do is pass in our number here. It's going to come from props automatically. The next thing we're going to do is create a new method called click, and this is going to receive a number as the first argument. Just to see if this is working, I'm going to do a console log on number, save it off, head back to my browser and open up the console. We do have some warnings here, I promise I will show you how to fix these later on. For now, let's just focus on the concepts. If we go ahead now and click on one of these buttons, we are going to hopefully get a console log. <laughs> Apparently not, it looks like we've made a mistake. Let's see if we can figure that one out. Everything is looking pretty good to me. Ah, uh, we're missing the event here. We have to bind the click event. Save it off and try one more time. We're going to clear those warnings for now. We will address those later on. If we click on a button now, it is working correctly. We are console locking that. So everything is working as expected. We can simplify this a little bit. Because we know here that we're going to have a number via props, we're actually going to omit this one for now. And instead, we're just going to say this.number. We can do this to refer to a prop easily. Much like computer properties and data, we can just say this.number where number is a prop and it's going to work just fine. The next thing we need to do is have some way to communicate with the parent. Let's go ahead and do that now. What we're going to do is see a new method called this.emit. This is how you can emit an event. We're going to emit an event from the child and then we're going to listen for the event on the parent. And this can be called whatever you like. In this case, I'm going to call it chosen because we chose a number. We can also pass an argument. I'm going to pass a payload and that's going to contain my number. So I'm going to say this.number and we're going to be able to access this one in the parent. Let me show you how you can do that, do that now. We are emitting an event called chosen and we're going to now go and listen for that event. Let's head down to our component and make sure we're listening for the correct event. We are going to use VON, it is an event, and we're going to listen for the chosen event. And what we're going to do is call a method. In this case, I'm going to call it add number. It's going to add it to a list. Let's head down and define that method right now. The method is going to be called add number, so we're just going to go ahead and define it. And the first argument is going to be whatever we passed in as a payload. So let's go ahead and define that payload. In this case, it's just going to be called number. This might seem a little bit confusing. I'm going to write the code and then show you how it works. Just go ahead and do a console log just to make sure this is working. We're going to log our number, save it off. We're going to see if it's working and then I'm going to explain everything. We head back to our console and clear those warnings and give this another try. If I click on a button, we're going to see a console log. Everything is working correctly. So what is happening here? Let's just go through the full workflow one more time. We're going to emit an event. I think that's pretty clear so far. We click on this, we're going to call this function called click, and it's going to say this.emit. We're going to emit a chosen event, and it's going to have one argument, this.number. We're now going to respond to this event in the parent component, so let's head up there. This component, the number component, is going to emit an event, and we're listening for that here with v on chosen. We're going to call a function called add number. We scroll down to add number, we see it here, and the first argument is going to be whatever you emitted in the payload. In this case, it's going to be this value up here, the number. So we're able to access that in the parent component. Let's head down here and handle that one now. 
Now that we have a number, we're going to create a new variable and put it into the list. And I'm going to call that one number list. Or actually, let's call it uh, let's call it number history. It's going to be an empty array at first, and we're going to populate it as we go. Finally, all we need to do is update the array by saying this dot number history dot push. And of course, everything in data is going to be reactive. That's where I define number, so it's going to update automatically. We're just going to push in number. Let's save it off. The next thing we're going to need to do is render these, and we have done this before using uh, using V4. So let's go ahead and do it again. We can reuse our number component. Very convenient. Let's go ahead and do that. And this time we're going to be looping over the number history array. Now that we have that, we're going to bind to the number, but we're not going to listen to events on these. Just because an event is emitted doesn't mean you have to listen to it. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Can't see any numbers yet because we haven't added any to the array, but if I click on a button, we can see we're now getting a new number down here. It is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to add a divider here just to make it nice and clear. And we can see this is working exactly as you would expect. Every time we emit an event, we're listening for the chosen event. We're going to call the add number function and that's simply going to do this dot number history accessing this array and push the new number in. Everything in data is going to be reactive, so we're going to update automatically. And we saw how we were easily able to reuse our number component. We're already seeing the benefits of our refactor. This was a pretty fast lecture, and in general, this was a pretty fast section. We have covered a ton of different content. So what we're going to do in the next section is build an application, and we're not going to see any more new content. We're just going to use what we've learned to build a substantial real-world application. Let's go ahead and jump into the next project.